Welcome to We Don't Die, where my goal is to give you evidence that although our bodies disappear, we survive physical death. Every episode we explore this topic with men and women who have some incredible stories to share, and many of them have made sharing the reality of life after death their life's purpose. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the number one international best-selling book, We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. I'd like to tell you a little bit about today's guest. Today's guest is actually me. This is the very first episode of We Don't Die, so I thought I'd give you a little bit of information of what the show's about. You can also hear my story and why I've started it. I'm going to do my best on every episode to keep it around 30-35 minutes, but I do have an instinct that some of the interviews will go a little longer. For me, I have been on the life after death journey looking for evidence for about 15 years, so to be able to sum it up in 30 minutes, it's not going to happen. What I've done is I've created a web page for this show, and the web page is wedontdieradio.com. And on wedontdieradio.com, you'll find out information about the guests we've had. Uh, some of them, I'll even put their pictures up. We often will talk and uh, refer back to maybe a video that the guest has online or their website. Some of them are authors. Some of them write blogs. So on wedontdieradio.com, we will have links so that you can find out more. And I've also created what I call the Insiders Club. And membership is free. It's one of those things you put your name and your email address in. And I promise I won't send you tons of emails. Uh, and you can cancel, of course, at any time. But by joining, the purpose is I want to give you some of the things that I have about life after death. I have a few chapters of my book, uh, We Don't Die. Again, I can't get to everything in this episode, but in the very first few chapters of my book, I go into great detail about my 15-year journey of life after death, and you can read it there. Also, I have an audio called How to Survive Grief that has really helped a lot of people who have lost a loved one get through grief and release it and um, hopefully soon move to the other side of it. Okay, Grief is a real tough one and I think believing in life after death, believing that your loved ones are still around will help with grieving. So that's another thing I intend out of this show. Um, also, I'm going to be doing monthly giveaways. And just by being part of the Insiders Club, you're entered. And there are actually life after death goodies that I will be giving. And there's some other cool things that are secret that you have to join to find out. Am I keeping you on the edge of your seat? I hope so. The intent of this radio show, this We Don't Die podcast, is to give you evidence that life after death is real, that your loved ones that you've lost, even the pets that we've had, they have not died and we will see them again. Things can be invisible to your eyes, but they can be very real. Imagine you're going for a walk and there's a, a puddle in the ground and a few sunny days that puddle, puddle disappears. Water is gone but it still survives somewhere. You know we live in this time in space where we have something called the wireless internet. I don't know if anybody knows how exactly we're all connected right now wirelessly but there is an invisible world going on around us that we cannot see but it's very very real. When you think about it, if we don't die, it makes our lives for a purpose, don't you think? I talked to one gentleman who I asked him, what do you think the point is of being here on Earth, really, if we don't die? And he said, you know when we go to college and things are great and we learn and we're taking all the notes and we can even get straight A's or A pluses in the courses, it's not till we get out on the job in the real world that we actually learn and can apply things. So he kind of equated being in a college course and then going out into the field as to being in heaven and then coming to earth. So I like that. So 
you've heard this, the title of my book, right? We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Well, I am as curious as you are about some of the guests that we are coming that are coming on to this show. Is this guest going to be someone that can convince me of life after death with their story? So I haven't met these people yet. A few of them I have, but I have a concern. We're, are they going to be these new agey kind of people, spiritual people, talking in the big metaphysical world uh, words? I hope not. But we're in this adventure together and we might get some of that so my request for you and for me is that we listen for the gold we go into every interview thinking there's something here for my life uh, as opposed to judging and assessing which is so easy to do and if you know someone who'd be the perfect guest please 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 let me know um, go to we don't die radio.com and there's a place to contact Sandra and guests of our show can be Anyone that has got a real good story of why they believe in life after death can be people that have had a near-death experience and have crossed over and had a few glimpses of the other side. They can be people that have gone to bed at night and they've had a dream of a visitation of a, a spouse or a parent or someone and and the reality of that to them or even if... Um, things they were told have happened since. I mean, that's amazing. There's uh, people that have been with a loved one um, as they've passed away. I, I know one man who his father was talking about what it's like looking into heaven just moments before his death and he could actually see people who had died and interesting he had been in a coma and didn't know that these people had died so that is very cool or even you know we have friends and even ourselves that might have gone to a medium and have one of those experiences that there's no question that our loved one is still around because this medium could not know that information. So if you know somebody that make a perfect guest, even if they want to come on for 10 minutes and tell a brief story, I'm all about that. So have you ever had the experience when you hear somebody's story and you get goosebumps? Well, goosebumps is the measure I personally want to know if the show is good. So as the interviewer, um, I want to listen as I because I've never heard these folks for the first time and if I get the goosebumps I'm hoping you do too um, and I I really do appreciate your feedback and your honesty iTunes is one of the places that this podcast will go and on iTunes there is a place where you can rate and review the show and I wouldn't mind at all if you did that give me one star if you think it's missing something and let me know what it's missing and what you'd like to see give me five stars tell me what works um, did you get the goosebumps yes no it, 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 I'd love it I would love to hear from you too so you might have the skeptical mind like me that Sandra you'll have to convince me in this and that's okay I want to forewarn you of something we all have a skeptical mind I think so I think we we're born that way and it tells us what's true and what isn't true and it's a good thing that we have it because often it keeps us out of danger you might get a some strange vibes from somebody and you know no you don't want to go into a place or talk to a certain person but that little voice doesn't always speak the truth for instance how many times are we afraid of something that after the fact we thought well that was silly you know I didn't need to be afraid of that person or that event or when we wake up in the morning when you look in the mirror I mean are you filled with power and how gorgeous you are and how great your day is going to be or does your voice tell you to hit the snooze button and that today's going to be an awful day and have you fear what's coming do you have a voice that might say that you're unlucky in love you're destined to be single you're unattractive um, that your life would be better if you were thinner you know we all have a voice and as far as it relates to this show I want to tell you that voice isn't always right it's not you are a perfect wonderful great being and um, you know of course we could all tend to lose a few pounds and there's things we can do to better ourselves but we are not bad people so your voice in your head might try to tell you I don't know oh this guest is a lunatic or Sandra doesn't know what she's talking about or whatever that may be and I'm gonna ask you 
even though these thoughts come up, try to be in the present moment. Try to be on the edge of your seat listening that there's something in this interview that's going to help me in my life today. Uh, be present. Try not to judge. Listen. And if all else fails, leave me a review on iTunes that mm, maybe not so good. Um, conversations can be changed. I really am out to have the people on planet Earth believe that life after death is real because if we are not afraid of dying, if we really know that the moment we close our eyes here on Earth the last time that we're going to open them somewhere else and that we're going to be reunited with our loved ones and that our life here on Earth was for a purpose then I think we can live a different kind of life now. What would it be like to live your life with courage, with power, with being able to say the things you want to say as opposed to being on mute? So often we're afraid to speak, but there's something we want to say. What would it be like to be free in your life? What would it be like to go after your dreams and fulfill them? And I think, you know, thousands of years ago, people believed the earth to be flat. Now, they didn't just believe it. They knew it. It was truth. However, um, it has been proven that our earth is round. And it took a long time for people to buy into that. But you know what? It's the truth. So I think it'll happen in our lifetimes that more people will believe in life after death than not. Um, but we'll see. But that's why I'm out here. And also selfishly, I know when I hear these stories, I get motivated. And so I'm hoping that we all do, that we all can use a half hour episode and be motivated in our life and uh, take some risks. Uh, Neil Donald Walsh has got a great quote that says, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. So when we can stretch into the unknown, good things happen. And am I fearful starting this show? You bet I am. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I don't know if you're going to like it. But you know what? No risk, no rewards. What else do I want to tell you? Okay, I'm going to start sharing my story with you. And I want to remind you that I'm a talker, as you have figured out. And if I don't to say everything I want to say, please go to we don't die radio dot com, uh, join the in Insiders Club, and there you can read the first few chapters of my book that says it all. And am I trying to push my book on this show? Well, yes and no. Um, on one hand, of course, my ego says I want everybody in the world to read it. I want to be number one on the New York Times bestseller list. And I'm human, so I'd be lying to you if I, I didn't want you to. But I'm also not going to push it because the the information within the pages, even within uh, what you're going to get for free, being on the Insiders Club, is going to make a difference in your life. And that's what I really hope. I want you to have a better life just by being part of this um, interview and the show today. So a little bit about Sandra Champlain. I'm a, currently a 48 year old woman living in Massachusetts and my fear of dying back in the 90s is what had me go on this discovery of proving if, if there's any proof of life after death. Now I grew up in a family where I had maybe heard of one medium and a psychic when I was a kid but as far as mom and dad were concerned those people were lunatics. So I never bought into the world of the supernatural. I mean that just wasn't my thing, was never even interested at all in it. But I woke up in a series of days straight having this fear of what is my life for? Do I have a purpose? I had had uh, breakups from relationships and you know I had jobs that weren't going so well. I've never been happy looking in the mirror. I've always battled my weight, gone up and down and hated myself for it. So many things and to look up at the stars and maybe you've had this experience and you kind of start thinking of the vastness of the universe and and wonder, you know, what is it all about? And some people get inspired by it and I got afraid. I needed to know what happens to Sandra Champlain after I die. Of course, 
I don't want to die and I'm not interested in that and I don't want any pain but I had this real panic that when I died like I'd be over like my it just Sandra would disappear forever and I wasn't okay with that um, I'd like to rationalize it and dig to where it came from but I don't think any of that is really important what's important is that I was in devastating fear just I couldn't sleep at night I went to bed at night thinking what if I died what would happen and fear 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 so I started decide you know what my first thing to do was turn to religion uh, grew up Catholic and I did as much reading as I could about the afterlife within my own religion and not bad not good but there's stories of faith I didn't read anything that made the fear go away so I started studying other major world religions and the more I dug the more I saw common stories of religions believing in heaven or the afterlife or reincarnation um, believing in something after death yet nothing gave me that concrete evidence I was looking for nothing so the fear still existed and at some point I thought well if I can just be a good person then hopefully uh, when I die there is a heaven and good things will happen you know because I I didn't want the opposite I didn't want to hear that if I'm a bad person bad things will happen so I put tried to put it out of my mind I just knew in my gut that I wasn't going to find any answers and lo and behold I was introduced on a, a series of people that came into my life and uh, they were some new age people and you know, I didn't really go for that kind of thing but one thing led out, led to another and I ended up having an opportunity to go to a stage show of a medium and her name is Doreen Virtue and I am sitting in the audience just as skeptical as can be and of course people would get up and ask a question and Doreen would not only give an answer but she'd tell them their grandmother Rose is sitting behind you and she used to make you your favorite um, cream of tomato soup with rice when you were a kid and she's the one who taught you how to knit and this is the message she has for you and in those moments people would just cry you know just say really touched and you know part of me thought wow you know that's cool but the the skeptic part of me thought that's a scam you know these people are plants in the audience and eventually uh, somebody's going to come looking for my money and try to sell me a book or something and as the evening went on of course there was no scam there was no sell for anything it was the evening was over and the evening was over so this experience had me want to research Doreen Virtue I, and I found her website and it's angeltherapy.com is Doreen's site and lo and behold she offered a three-day course in mediumship and the promise was if you attended the course you are someone who can accurately tell the deceased people around others I don't know about you but um, on one hand I thought there's no way that's possible and on the other hand now remember I've got that fear of dying that was always there and I had just seen that stage show and I thought gosh if I could get some proof if if I could or even if I couldn't see the deceased around others if I could be around mediums maybe that'll take the fear of fear away so back in 2002 I make my journey out to Laguna Beach California very secretly um, I I've taken a lot of um, self-help courses throughout my life I'm always fascinated with what it is to be human and always trying to improve my, on myself or you know I take a retreat to lose weight and exercise I do that sort of thing so to the people in my life I pretty much lied and said I was you know going on to a course I didn't say too much other than that but I show up on this weekend uh, retreat with Doreen Virtue and I want you to imagine it was held in um, a hotel that was right on the beach small hotel and there was a conference room 
And I have to tell you, I was as nervous as nervous can be. Because when I walked in the room, Doreen was there, and she's a beautiful woman, but she had one of these long angel gowns on, and so did a lot of the other people in the room. And I'm pretty regular. I'm not too fancy. Not fancy at all. And I show up in my khaki capris and a polo shirt, and I immediately felt out of place what am I doing here and you know I didn't mention the price but it was way 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 far out of my my price range and thankfully we have the MasterCard I put it on um, and I, I was uncomfortable and Doreen was nice though and she said we all might be nervous and that's okay and she says I want to spend the first half hour or so talking about mediumship and letting you know what it is and, and what it isn't. And one of the things she had us do immediately is she says, I want to show you what, what it's like to do a medium reading. We're not really going to do one now, but this is how a medium would give a reading. And she says, I want everybody to take a partner. And of course, I pick a lady. I didn't know anybody in the room. And so I said, hey, how about you? And she says, yeah, OK, how about you? And we pulled our chairs aside and we sat knee to knee and Doreen's instructions were we were going to just pretend we were mediums just so we get a feeling for what happens and and what doesn't to take away our fear she says I want each of you to hold hands hold hands with the other and she says close your eyes and she says one of you decide to go first and she says what we're going to do is just pretend pretend you're a medium medium pretend you can see the deceased person around another one another person and she said we use our imagination for this um, and it, and people come through us just like it is your imagination you don't really see people they appear like they're in your memory or or you're creating them in your mind so I decide to go first and Doreen's talking us through and she says first thing you do is you imagine an invisible energy beam connecting you and your partner she says our loved ones are not gone their personality still survives so we need to be polite so you just introduce yourself psychically and say is there anyone that wants to come through and so in my mind, because we're making this up, I'm like, hello, I'm Sandra. Is there anybody that wants to come around and, and talk to me about my partner? And in my imagination, I created a man standing behind my partner. I gave him a name. His name was Jan. He was a fisherman while he was alive. He lived in Denmark. He had a big gap between his front teeth. He had really windburned skin. Um, he was this woman's grandfather on the mother's side. And he died of lung cancer. He was a big smoker on the fishing boat. And I'm having fun. I just want you to know, creating this man in my mind. And he never told his daughter, which is this woman's mom, that he loved her while he was on earth. So the message was that she was to go back home and tell mom that, you know, grandpa loves you. So I've got my eyes closed and you just have to imagine I'm telling this woman the story pretty much like I told you. Um, and I opened my eyes when I was done, like, okay, it's your turn. You try, you know, you, you be the medium to me. And there were just streams of tears going down this woman's face. And she was shaking and just looking at me. Um, and I still remember her blonde hair and her blue eyes just looking at me. And, you know, I, I really thought I did something wrong. And she says, Sandra, my grandfather's name was Jan. He was a fisherman in Denmark. He died of lung cancer. Your description was perfect. And he never told my mom that he loved her. So for me, the disbeliever, I'm getting, I got my goosebumps measurement right now, to realize that not only is medium abilities real, but holy cow. I saw this like it was my own imagination and it was real. This woman turns to me and it's her turn to go now and she sees a man standing behind me. She says his name is John. He's a German Shepherd 
that he's holding a cane and a few more details and it's my grandfather complete with the German Shepherd who was my my grandpa's dog Champa Wow um, in a very short time I went from disbeliever to like I said holy cow there's something else possible here the weekend went on and I wish I could tell you that I was accurate um, giving my descriptions of life after death and medium readings to other people but I was only right maybe 30 to 40 percent of the time and it was incredibly disappointing that part however when I was right I was really right I mean right on um, not too long ago I had an opportunity to uh, study with a medium and you know because 2002 is a long time ago and the woman sitting next to me um, she was an Irish gal real cute uh, brown hair brown eyes and so you know I'm thinking do I still have this because truthfully I, I have not wanted to make my life about being a medium um, that's not who I am I, I want to share with you the other things I got into not just mediumship but there is and I've been wrong so many times that it's like I you know I, I don't want to be wrong with people I want people to like me but I wanted to see if it's still possible so there I was and here in Massachusetts uh, with a medium named Rita Berkowitz and we had to partner up and um, just tell our partner you know what we saw around us and this girl went first and she did not did not tell me one accurate thing about anybody in my life and so I thought well yeah okay so maybe I don't still have it because she doesn't have it but that's okay well what happened was is I closed my eyes and in my mind's eye I'm getting a picture of Italy I'm getting picture of a little old lady short heavy set you know stocky you know with the oh, I hate to say this on the radio but I'm going to kind of like the boobs down to the knees um, that kind of look she had little granny glasses on just on her nose um, really wiry gray hair she had an apron on I got an image of spaghetti and meatballs I see a little dog that looks just like Toto from the Wizard of Oz and I keep hearing the message that she's Italian um, but not off the boat so I'm telling my partner this and you know again thinking I'm making it up because I think I'm talking to an Irish gal just by the looks of her and again I open my eyes and she's got the tears running down and she's like she had a, a nickname for her her Grammy but she said totally fit the description with the apron the boobs to the knees heavy set the wiry hair the glasses she said she used to make me spaghetti and meatballs and she said the dog is is Pepe that was her dog looked just like Toto from the Wizard of Oz and she says her grandmother used to always say um, I'm Italian not off the boat I took an airplane so the fact that I did that was oh it was crazy good um, so that's something I experienced I also experienced you know I brought up Reverend Rita Berkowitz Reverend Rita is here in Massachusetts and she's known as the spirit artist and she's she's got the website the spiritartist.com and she's also got a book called the idiot's guide to communicating with spirits because somewhere on my journey I wanted to know why can I be accurate in medium reading sometimes and other times I'm not and so I thought maybe this book would help and the cool thing about Reverend Rita and her book is that she's somebody that not only is a medium but she's an artist so she could be with you and not only is she telling you the story about your deceased loved ones she's got her notepad out and she's drawing a picture of them and if you don't think that's real go to the spiritartist.com and just look at some of the the um, portraits because not only is the portrait there of um, the person as she sees them but people send in their photographs as the people actually existed I had the opportunity um, after my dad died to see Rita in Massachusetts and 
you know, it's interesting because I've lost my dad and dad was really the catalyst that made me write the book. Um, more about that when you read the free chapters because I learned so much about grief that I, I needed to get out to others. And so even though I believe in life after death, uh, I, I don't have to tell you how awful the pain is of grief. It is devastating. And so um, I cried myself to sleep every day for a long time and broke out in tears many times during the day. And I knew that I had read about Reverend Rita and I wanted an appointment with her. And so I went to visit her after dad had passed away just because I just I needed to hear the confirmation again. I just needed to know he's okay. Um, and just to have that that feeling that he hadn't died and it was really cool because when I walked into her office and Rita is as regular as they come you, you don't think she's a medium you just think she's a nice lady and the first thing she said is she saw a little lady with me she's like is your grandmother passed away and um, and Grammy has you know died a couple years before my dad and she's like, I just want to tell you that, you know, she's the greeter in heaven, you know, and my Grammy was had such a warm, wonderful, loving personality. She'd kiss and hug everybody she met. So I just thought, what a nice thing to see. The, you know, your first moments in heaven is seeing my grandmother. Pretty cool. But Rita also talked about my grandfather. And then she said to me, dad is here. And she sat with me and the notepad came out. And she says, I'm just going to talk. And so when she was talking about my dad, she said some very specific things. But as she's, her hand is moving, you know, the eyes came first. She drew a picture of this man with brown hair, brown eyes, and looked similar to how my dad looked from pictures that I saw when dad was in the Air Force in his in his late 20s and dad had died at the age of 74 and had gray hair and tubes sticking throughout him he died of cancer and um, it didn't look healthy as at all looked like a feeble old man and for her to draw that picture of my dad and although it didn't look identical to my dad you know he she also didn't draw a blonde guy with glasses and a mustache you know I mean she was close enough and um, she says when we cross over um, she says we can pick our best health our best age you know our best everything and she says that's the age and how your dad is appearing and I thought oh that's awesome but Rita was so awesome because she not only told me um, about my dad she told me the month that he first got diagnosed with the tumor in his back and over the next five months what had happened and she says you know he he would have these kind of pains and um, dad used to grab his abdomen when he was in the hospital before he passed away and say it feels tight it's just so tight and um, and that's how he described the pain well Rita used those exact words uh, dad had a broken spine due to this tumor that broke apart his spine and he could only get out of a chair by very slowly leaning way forward he had this they called it a turtle shell that was protecting his spine and then he'd put his hands way back on the seat of a chair and he'd push himself up very very slowly so Rita demonstrated exactly how dad got out of the chair um, Rita knew that um, I have two sisters and a brother and that we've had some tough times um, and for anybody who's had a, a loss I mean along with grief comes a lot of uh, arguments with loved ones so she knew about that um, she predicted that uh, I was up to something big which now that I have the book I am and there are some other personal things that I won't share now but uh, it made me believe that that dad is still here no question and so now I'm looking at the clock and I'm at 34 minutes almost maybe a little bit less because I didn't start on time but I want to start wrapping up this interview but I want to tell you what more there, there is to look forward to in my story um, and again we don't die radio.com we don't die radio.com um, enter your name and your email address and I'll send you the link that has the first few chapters of my book which is a condensed version of my 15 years of 
trying to prove is there life after death you know i've i've taken courses with um raymond moody who's a doctor who is a guy who coined the phrase near-death experience and i talk in great depth about near-death experiences there's a fellow named dr ken ring who you know we hear these stories of when we die or people flatline on the table for a moment that they float above their bodies and the skeptical mind wants to say no that's not possible that's just what your brain does shutting down well Ken Ring studied people that were blind that didn't have vision and in that in-between place uh, between um, their life on that operating table and the other side heaven or the hereafter if you will they had sight for the very first time so I talk about that and we don't die there's a doctor named Dr. Alan Botkin who um, you've heard of uh, PTSD post-traumatic stress disorder that happens a lot with our veterans returning from war in helping the veterans with a, a technique he's got um, which is called EMDR which has got something to do with eye movements and it desensitizes the person to the um, painful emotion but by doing this he actually was able to get people in a um, state of mind where they could accurately tell the deceased loved ones around others and and Dr. Botkin wasn't even a believer in life after death and because of his experiences and because of what he's he saw and helped people to see he's now given his whole life to helping reduce grief using this technique he now calls it IADC induced after death communication uh, very very cool um, electronic voice phenomena is I'm gonna dedicate a whole episode to that I'm sure but it's by using a digital tape recorder or a tape recorder or maybe even your iPhone now I'm not not sure but you record the sound of noise and it can be a fan blowing in the background or a waterfall or something and within the sound when you play it back there's actual voices in it and as crazy as that may sound and as futuristic and you know there was a scary movie that came out um, 10 years ago called white noise you know um, I have to tell you that I took a course in that and I have proved actually that it is real uh, we've heard of loved ones that can turn on lights and, and do weird things like that um, I think we are all made up of energy and there is a way that our loved ones takes practice can rearrange sound on a recorder and voices come out and uh, gosh I wish I could get into this longer right now and I I promise you that's like the what I start out my book with is that um, is that story but it's very very much real and I want you to know that there's no scary messages there's messages of love there's messages of healing I mean if you haven't talked to somebody in 40 years what are you gonna say and most of the messages are things like I love you you know or I'm right here with you things like that so there's a lot of good to be had it's not a world of the scary paranormal that I'm inviting you to that stuff might exist I don't know I in my 48 years I've experienced good messages coming from uh, the hereafter I've experienced humor coming from the he hereafter and most importantly love so one more time we don't die radio uh, dot com and I just invite you to read the first few chapters of my book and what else can I tell you I think that's it we're gonna wrap up a little longer than 30 minutes but sorry about that you'll learn to hopefully you'll learn to love me but you'll learn that I am real and I care and I'm out to make a difference so I look forward to your feedback um, I, I look forward to you being an active part of this show and that it makes a difference for you so I'm hoping it did and I'm just gonna remind you in the words of Neil Donald Walsh life begins at the end of your comfort zone so I will invite you today to reach outside of your comfort zone do something maybe you've never done before and take one action 
towards your dream coming true. Because I can tell you, we end up with the same results by doing the same things. Stretch into that little area of discomfort and you will be amazed at what happens. So this is Sandra Champlain, host of We Don't Die radio show. And I really want to thank you for taking the time and being here today. Thanks for listening. I got every finger and toe crossed that you'll tune in again. And we'll see you soon. Thanks again. Mm-hmm.